This is a faulty magnetic motion sensing light and it was sent in by Mike in Bedford um, and he said when it's plugged into charge it's fine, it works but it doesn't charge up. So you can plug it in and the red LED lights here it draws about it's drawing about 50 milliamps but it goes from red to green flashing very quickly just flickering randomly and it works when you turn the switch to either mode position but it won't actually operate on the battery itself as soon as you unplug it that's it you're not getting a charge so let's open it up now there may be unusual creaking popping noises because this is the first time i've tried the phone since i had to change the screen and it didn't go very well i had an incident a while back when i set off an explosive charge in the vicinity of the phone and it, it, a red hot spot of metal just touched the screen that caused a wee blemish and I remember scrubbing it like that thinking is that just a mark and I rub it off and a little crack appeared and I thought oh shit and someone at that point did suggest I should put a protective screen cover over it that would stop it spreading but I didn't and then I was in the gym and I had this really good technical idea. I went through to the changing room, grabbed the phone out, dropped it on the carpet and it just went crack and it like it's covered in cracks up there now. And it was still working fine because it was just the outer layer of glass. But that's bonded on quite tightly onto the other layers of glass inside and it's very thin. It's very hard to change the outer glass without damaging the inner one. So I thought, since the new screen's about 25 quid, I'll just buy a new screen. So this is the original. Oh, what went wrong? Uh... This uh, has a multiple layer of plastic film. You have to bend this back quite tightly. Then you have to fold the side wing in here quite tightly uh, and then fold this through. So I'll, I don't like folding these uh, plastic ribbon cables because it's very easy to crack them. I've done that in the past. So um, the replacement, I folded them very gently, uh, put on all the adhesive uh, sort of bit that sits in. The sort of, it's a sort of die cut adhesive layer that you place into the phone frame. And then once I'd uh, checked the, that everything's working, plugged it in, screen working perfectly, I peeled off the layer, stuck the screen in permanently, and at that point it decided to not work because this was very slightly off alignment. And just because of the pressure, it was the angular pressure it was actually putting in the little click down connector, it was stopping it working. Um, so once I got it working, then the glue is now knackered around the outside, so the screen is not terribly well stuck to the phone. So very occasionally it sort of pops up, you may hear a sort of, sort of crack noise as it pops up again off the frame. I'm going to have to find a way to glue that back down again. This is interesting. I have already, needless to say, been taking this to bits, so uh, it comes off in lots of layers. It's very intriguing. It's got the back reflector layer. And then it's got what appears to be almost like the next layer is, let's see if I can get it off. It's a, almost like a holographic-y type film. It's a very fine diffusing film that projects patterns when, uh, when you sort of shine light through it. So the, there's a diffusing, oh, actually I'm getting it wrong here. Here's the weird film. It's almost like a Fresnel lens, but it's a sheet. Uh, but I'm digressing. And then you're on to the screen itself, which despite the fact it's sort of, I guess that is one final layer of the diffusion bonded onto the, um, what would that be, the polarizer. It's quite a complex arrangement. It's very, very sophisticated. You take these things for granted, it's just the screen of the phone. But anyway, I digress. Back to this. So uh, let's uh, pop this open and I can guess from the fact it's got these little plastic plugs in the end. Yes, there are screws under them. It's the usual arrangement then that it's got the little uh, covers and screws into an aluminium extrusion. Now, there's a possibility that the battery might just be disconnected inside. That would be a nice thing. That would be an easy fix. End cap comes off. Will this slide out? Oh, don't know if this is what's supposed to happen, but let's uh, lift the, this up like this. Okay, that will go in back again again. Is this going to come out now? Yes, it is. I'm going to have to be careful. I can see a lithium cell at the back here. Oh, you know what? I can smell the lithium cell. That has leaked its electrolyte. 
let's uh, peel this off. Where's my explosion containment pie dish? Explosion containment pie dish is conveniently located for in case of a little emergency situation. So this is stuck on here with sticky pads. There's a little chip here which is almost certainly a BISS0001. Yes it is. It's the same classic chip that's used for most passive infrared detectors. The lithium cell is connected. This doesn't... Normally a lithium cell would feel kind of... It would feel tight inside, but this feels loose and crumply, so that's a uh, seal has broken and the electrolyte has crept out, so that is gubbed. Let's uh, check it out anyway, let's see if we can pump some charge into it, although I don't think we can. Is that going to be the 4056 perhaps? TC4056A, that's upside down, but that's okay, I'll just show you anyway since... Uh, if that focuses. And it's got the two little protection chips. It's got the DW01, DW01 and the little MOSFET package. MOSFET package, DW01A, DW01A, which is the battery protection chip, and there's a little MOSFET package that enables or disables the battery. Not as much point since it's let all its magic sort of all its magic electrolyte out. No signs that it's gone bang or anything like that. It's just basically leaked and oozed out its electrolyte. Oh, that is just so floppy. I think we should open this. I think we should open this. It's kind of, it's not going to work anyway, is it? What's the worst could happen? So where is the break? Well, I think I've just, uh, there's a wee bit lifted there, but that might have been me just now. The smell is at this end. Oh, the smell's at all ends. <laughs> So, uh, oh, the thing is just reeking of that nice smell that's probably carcinogenic, but not to worry. The question is then, if I got another lithium cell and stuck it into that, since all the protection is there, the snag is this, uh, what size is it? It's a uh, 1,000 milliamp power. Um, Sizing, I'm guessing this is the size, 3430130, uh, what have I got to measure this with? I've got a measuring device here, I've not got a measuring tape in the vicinity. Pretty sure I did have one, but I've just misplaced it. Excellent! Yeah, I thought I had a measuring tape here. Or a, a ruler. Not to worry. Uh, just give us a second fact, I'm going to grab one. So I've got a measuring tape. Uh, the number is 3430130. If I measure it this way, it's 30, so that'd be the 3 -oh bit. What's this going to be? 130, so that's the 130. -oh. The 30 is the uh, width and 130. -oh. So 34 then is probably a thickness 3.4 millimetres thick. Yes, that's about right. So 3.4 millimetres by 30 millimetres by 130 millimetres. Okay. So uh, let's uh, try putting a charge in this. Let's uh, get the meter on, the power supply and... Uh, see what happens. And I'll just use brute force and see what happens when I stuff some current into it. And then we'll rip it open if it's not going to do anything. I do think it is dry. It looks like it's a... Uh, they're usually sort of shrink-wrapped inside in the sense that they're usually really tight. It's not usually this loose. What's the bench uh, supply set at? It's set at 3 volts. Let's stuff this in here. Let's stuff this in there. Crank the voltage up. Oh, it's miserable. It's showing about 32 milliamps when it should really be showing a lot more than that. What if I press it flat to try and push all the plates together? The current has shot up now I'm pressing it flat. I think it's just the fact it's lost its air. So what if I squish it? It's 150 milliamps and then when I let go it drops down to 30 milliamps. No good. Okay. Let's, uh, tell you what, just to make it more visual, let's uh, bring in the meter. I'll bring in the cheapy meter since it's got the crop clips on it. Am I going to be able to squeeze a bit of juice out of this now that I've squished it? Oh, one, it's at 1.1 volts and if I squeeze it, it kind of goes down. I think it would take a little bit of charge, but it really is. It's gubbed. It's, it's knackered. 
that's a shame. I guess that just happens. It must have just been perforated at some point or the seal uh, was damaged during the, the manufacture. There's that characteristic smell that you get off them that uh, you can smell the leak as the electrolyte comes out. Let's open this up. That's what we like doing. I don't think it's really going to do anything violent. Famous last words. And then I would go and dispose of the smouldering remnants outside afterwards. This is when gloves would be proper flame retardant gloves. It's debatable whether uh, some gloves are a wise move or not because, uh, as others point out, they can actually make the problem worse by melting onto your hands. It adds an element of excitement. This is where I have to remind people that opening lithium cells is not normal. No signs of heat and unpleasantness. Okay, I'll just rip the tabs off. There's the sticky tape inside. And here are the layers. So here's the separator. I'm getting a strong smell now. And here are the layers. It's in quite good condition, relatively speaking, mainly because it hasn't really seen much abuse. It is just... Now, one time I had one of these uh, plates just burst into flames on me when it was exposed to the air, it didn't like it, but it did have a full charge on it at the time. Oh yeah, that is smelling strongly of electrolyte now. Oh yeah. Things you probably shouldn't do with lithium cells. And that's fundamentally it. It's the copper layer, and with the coating on it, and the aluminium layer. Oh, that is really stinking there. That is very strong, but dead. So, uh, yeah, you've got the, the aluminium electrode, which is uh, one coating, and then you've got the copper electrode, which is the other, which is rapidly going sort of dry and crusty looking. And uh, when you charge it, the ions are actually transferred. They, they carry the uh, charge across. And then when you discharge it, uh, they move back through this separator, which is normally wet with electrolyte. And But the current, actually, the electrons have to find their way back through your load. So I'm going to put this into my explosion containment pie dish right now. And take it outside and put it in my tin that I put all my disassembled lithium batteries in because I have such a thing. And that's it. So the fault was the lithium cell. That's a shame. Tell you what then, one moment, I'm just going to go and I'm going to uh, get this outside where it's safer and brush all this stuff off the bench uh, before it bursts into flames. Uh, then I'm going to get a little lithium cell and we'll see if we can fix this. Mmm, the place smells so good. They should make an air freshener like that. They should call it lithium explosion. So I've got another battery pack here, lithium cell. With heat shrink around it, what was this out of? Can't remember what this was out of. It is holding a charge and it's got a little metal case in it and everything. I don't know if it's got protection, it doesn't really matter. It's got protection here, it'll be double protection. Let's uh, desolder this. And this. And then tin these leads. Crop them a little bit. This is a. It's going to try charging this at way too much current because you can use a resistor to program that 4056 chip uh, with the required charge current. I think you can. Yes, I'm pretty sure you can. And it will be set for that much larger cell. So it'll probably charge at too high current. We'll find out because uh, we can actually see what it charges at. Let's uh, reflow some nice juicy lead based solder onto here for a quality soldering experience. the negative connection and the positive connection. Right, let's get these connections on. So the negative one goes on first. I'll just splodge it on there. 
scientific term. And then the positive one goes on. There we go. Right. Let's, uh, well, let's check if it works. Yes, it does. Right, so what now? Noting that uh, there's a resistor per LED here, that's nice. Plus they've also got the positions to put uh, twice as many LEDs in it. It's quite uh, a versatile little unit. And it's got the little LDR light sensor in the front as well. It's fairly stereotypical. It's, I mean, it breaks down into the sort of module uh, approach that you get the USB input the standard 4056 charging circuit, the two protection chips are usually built on many of the smaller lithium packs, but in this case they put it on the circuit board and used a lithium cell with no protection, much like this one possibly is. And then it's the BISS0001 passive infrared sensor chip, which has everything else that's needed. And that's presumably driving this. Uh, this might be a little, is it that going to be a low dropout voltage regulator? It says 5525, the look of it. I think that might just be a transistor, though. Oh, no, there's a little transistor down here. Not sure. What's doing the switching of that? They might just be running the uh, sensor chip directly off the battery supply because it's not that high anyway, and it'll be fairly stable. So let's uh, plug this into charge and see uh, how much current it draws when it's charging. I think the... Uh, let's find out what voltage is on that already. We've already got a voltage of three point two volts. So it's not a high charge in that. So let's uh, plug our little analyzer in here and plug it into charge. So I can get the lead in the right way round. Oh, there it goes. Uh, the little red LED is lit on this side. The current that's being drawn is about 440 milliamps. That's quite reasonable enough, isn't it? 440 milliamps of the charge current. It's actually kind of okay for this little pack. This slightly bulgy pack, but that's okay. Uh, so that's kind of working. Uh, not much else to say. It's kind of fixed. It was the lithium battery pack that was the duff bit. And now the unit is working, but unfortunately it would require a matching lithium cell. I wonder if the lithium... I didn't see any signs that had been ripped as it was being pushed in, because it's got these magnets in the back. Well, they're just stuck in the surface, I think. They're very thin. I don't think they're actually ground into it. I thought they were actually uh, recessed into holes, but I think they're just super thin uh, neodymium magnets that are just stuck on the surface of aluminium. Um, and that's fundamentally it. It does work now, but uh, I would need this correct size of battery pack if I really wanted to put it back together as it is. Having said that, such things are often available on eBay. But uh, nice, nice to see inside and uh, quite fun to diagnose.